The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Ad Time with BX Ad Factory. My name is TJ Mohammed, and I'm excited to be partnering with BronxNet to bring you this episode. Today we'll be learning a little bit about myself and how I became an artist and we would also make paper collage which are self-portraits. My path as an artist started when uh, very early around age seven when I was in a boarding house at St. John's um, uh, Primary School in Ghana. So, but that was all unconsciously. Slowly after I graduated and finished uh, with high school and was heading to college, by chance I just found myself at Ganata College of Arts because I used to collect scraps of um, bottles, aluminum, and like sometimes cutleries to sell. It was the movement of the day in Nima where I grew up, uh, although I was born in Kintampo in the Bronga Hafa region. So right there, I thought this is something I wanted to do, looking at the scraps of fabric, uh, scraps of artworks, which were done with collage, uh, fabrics, beads, etc. A lot of paintings. So I went to the school and decided I wanted to enroll. I had great support from my family, especially my mom. So when you see in my career, there is a lot of women's project I'm doing, all started with the inspiration of my mom. Then I enrolled to Ganata College of Art and Design, graduated as uh, the best painter for the year, and I've been enjoying my art since. The reason why I became an artist is because it allows me to express myself with or without words. And growing up, um, I grew up in a very busy part of Accra, which is Nima. Um, Nima is also nicknamed uh, Boogie Down Nima, you know, inspiration from the Bronx. So it's like seeing Bronx in Ghana. And, you know, the expression just started, I was flowing, and sometimes I didn't have to even communicate with anybody, but through my artwork, they knew what I was, um, you know, communicating. I see the Bronx as home, um, and since I moved to uh, to the U.S. in 2013, I've enjoyed the movement in Bronx, looking at the colorful patterns on clothing, food, language. All of this influences my art, and my art is about my personal history and also my community history. So the relationship I have with the Bronx is mimicked in my work and my process. Also my uh, passion for working with found objects um, started in Ghana, but it, uh, I emphasized it when I was living in the Bronx, seeing how people moved uh, back and forth with objects on the streets. The kind of art I do um, could be interpreted as multidisciplinary, but it all started as a, I, I started as a painter. I was only painting, making beautiful landscape, and you know, out of passion. But slowly, I felt I wouldn't, I could not be an artist in this generation and not uh, comment on issues affecting humanity. Uh, so I started thinking about objects around me and then remembering what, how I used to uh, live before you know, enrolling into art school. So working with fun objects started very early in my career and then I work a lot with fabrics, I do a lot of installations and all of this process is what I'm mimicking in my own life. So when I'm doing, I'm working with uh, fabrics, it would be because of the theme that I'm working on. When I'm working with series of painting, it would also be from the theme that I work with. And the themes that I uh, work cut across immigration, it also, uh, I do a little bit of gender, and I do, now I do mostly uh, social justice work, most of which is 
uh, commenting on the political climate of where I am now, which is the US. So some of my works might uh, talk about issues affecting Africa and Ghana, but most of them now addresses issues in America and abroad. Challenges I face as a bronze artist, um, one of which is studio. So the idea of having a studio helps in expressing yourself. So working uh, from home or in a small uh, space, for me, you know, it's sort of like a detention. It sl slows me down. So what I do in those times to overcome those obstacle challenges is I think about ways that I can still work and not be messy. But in the studio, you enjoy the freedom. And also another challenge is uh, having to show works. Although some of these challenges I've been able to overcome it, but the biggest um, problem is the color of the skin, which tends to be um, a big problem that um, we face and, or I face uh, mostly. And now, you know, seeing myself as a Muslim, that also comes with another challenge. So there's this challenge of identity, challenge of self, and challenge of freedom. But all, uh, you know, stuff that slowly I'm able to overcome it. I feel artists and creatives are very important uh, because um, they investigate problems that are affecting humanity and then suggest solutions to how to overcome all of this um, obstacle. And then sometimes also artists create beautiful scenes. There are certain artworks that exist because the artists want them to exist. There are times where artists depict scenes that are from the past. So artists archive is our own history and through objects we all know how our histories are preserved. So all gender, it starts from photography, painting, sculpture, and when you look in the art history, art has been a leading god in changing and putting the world in a place that uh, we all want to see. Welcome back. Now we're going to work on our collage and the collage is going to have um, everything you have from home but I'll run you through the materials. This is a photo of me now as an artist but what I'm going to work on is another self-portrait of me as a baby. Um, the materials we're using is very common, found objects, I fancy found objects. This is a cardboard I got from one of the packages and then you also need your picture, uh, scraps of papers from magazine, newspapers. You could print them out. This is a printed picture of me as my only baby photo. And you need a scissors if you're going to be cutting, or you could just cut with your hand, just rip the papers. And that's what I would be doing together with the scissors. You need your glue. For glue, I'm using stick glue because it dries fast, but you can use whatever glue you have from liquid glue, Elmer's water glue. And markers are optional. You can use a marker, a pencil, or a pen. I prefer using a marker, and I'm using a very bold uh, marker. And of course, the cardboard. I already trimmed my photos for the sake of time, so I'm going to put them here, my scraps of paper here. And what I intend doing is to randomly play with the uh, colors and advertisement together with the text. I like, you know, to see the histories, like I mentioned earlier, uh, my work has personal history, so all of these price tags are part of my personal history, and some of the text you see on the magazine will document this moment that we are, the moment of quarantine and uh, the virus. So we'll start with glue. Um, step one, I would always like to put a lot of glue. If you're using um, liquid glue, just water down it to maybe a 50-50%, then 
you glow. Okay, I'll just continue with my papers here. Uh, same process, you glue and then you paste. This is where you get more creative with the background. What I like to do with the background here, I will just throw it just like an abstract painting. Um, some of the reference in this kind of abstract painting will be um, Jackson Pollock, you know, where he would throw splashes of paint, but here I'm throwing splashes of uh, paper, you know, incorporating the colors from the advertisement that I have. So I'm doing it in no particular order, but you know, this is the part you get more creative. I encourage you to, you know, think about ways to do this. You don't have to be perfect with the papers. And that is part of what um, most artists will call happy accidents, where the imperfection becomes perfect like this one here that has the price tag and we keep gluing if you're working as a family you could discuss this photo the photo you're going to use against the background maybe share some histories of the pictures that you have like i mentioned my mine is from my baby photo and in Ghana, whenever a child begins to sit, there would be a photo shoot for the baby. And that's my here. You can see me trying to sit. And the background is mostly the African wax fabric. But I trimmed it out and left a little bit of it. So you can see the history of that moment. And each fabric has its own history and meaning. So here, in place of fabric, we're using paper. So the more paper you add with different histories, the better your conversation be. And it you know, expands your conversation. And whenever you look at the artwork, you have a conversation with your piece. I'm moving very fast, but you can take your time and work along with your own pace. Again, if you don't have paper, you can use um, fabric or you could print out images or different color patterns from um, labels or from your computer. I like this one here that has food. Maybe I'll put that down here. And yeah, so same process. At this point, it's all about repetition of the same process. Getting more creative on how you splash your colors. Here I'm using paper on how I splash my paper. Another technique you can use for your background is you could add uh, markers if you have a, a kind of cardboard that would show up the markers. So you can write text that you want about your piece. And Yeah, I like this one here that has a laundry. So as you can see, we are building our background and anything in the background is going to remain flat. Then we have our foreground, which would be the image that you wish to put. And you don't have to use a portrait of yourself. You can also use your pet if you want. Or you just turn it into something that looks like a self-portrait, but more or less like a vision board. So there is a lot you could do with uh, this kind of collage. And 
one of the first places I started doing this collage was Kelly Street during one of my residences with the laundromat project. And over the years, I've just been playing with it and finding ways to make it more accessible. So you use very, very low material and you don't have to go to the store to get any extra material. If you have glue at home, that's it. You keep working. Mm. If you have a birthday coming up, you can just make a quick artwork for your friends or family. Feel free to share your artworks with um, your family members whenever you do, or you hashtag BX Art Factory or BronxNet. And you can hashtag me too, I will see it. At this point, we have our background filled. You just look around and see if you need to patch up little areas. So we just transformed the cardboard into a beautiful abstract piece. And some of the techniques that we use here for abstract you know it's working out of your heart to communicate your feelings and you could do it in so many ways So step one is done. As you can see, every part of the picture is filled up with scraps of paper. And this is what we call the background. Now, the background has multiple layers of histories from text that you can read to like some drugs, vitamins. This is about root. This is about cosmetics, there's food. So there's a little bit of everything in the background. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to use my baby photo here. And I intentionally printed that in black and white to create contrast. So I have a very colorful background and a one uh, tone picture here. You don't have to do it in one color. You can decide to uh, do it in various colors that you want. Again, I'm going to create a bit more creative here to create a halo around my head. So in doing that, I would think about where to place it. Another important aspect of um, artwork is planning and thinking about where should be your vocal point. The vocal point of this piece, I want it to be on the face and then everything else goes in. So it's like looking at the landscape. The image you see in front is bigger and everything goes smaller in the back. But in this case, we are creating, uh, using the same color tone, same uh, pictures. So what we would do is I would put a very bright color in the background for my halo, place the picture on top of it just to highlight it. So it's like there's a glow around the head which creates a vocal point. A vocal point is what you want the audience or the viewers to see first whenever they see your artwork. 
to do that, first I'm going to put some glue on the back of my picture. And I'm sure by now you will see how easy it is working with stick glue. Um, it's less messy, but if you don't have stick glue, of course you can use your any kind of glue that you have. Just try to make it nice and neat as possible. And I'll place this here. So as you can see, I have my baby picture attached to the halo. And I'm going to add more glue on the back. So here we add glue, rub, rub, rub. I use a lot of glue because I want the artwork to stay for a very long time. It's going to be a lifetime guarantee. And when you use less glue, the disadvantage is sometimes it rips off due to the change of weather. And if you want to hang it on the wall, you do not need to go through framing. You could just use the same paper to create a borderline around it. So we here we have a picture. I'm going to gently place it um, in the middle. And some people might not want it to be in the middle. That's fine. So the more creative you be, the better your artwork stands out. And I want it to be in landscape. Uh, in portrait, so that's why I'm using this way. But in landscape, would have been like that. And I think I prefer portraits, so it's more of a vertical artwork. And I try to rub it slowly. And Making collage is fun for me. I've been doing this all the time and during quarantine, this is one of the things that I love to do. Because you just sit at one place, play with paper, create a piece, and you're good. Now, this looks almost done, or it looks done, but I want to add more uh, creativity in it here. Um, what you can do is I'm giving you um, like various ways to make your artwork stand out. You can just cut more fabric or paper to decorate or to design or wear yourself a, a t-shirt or um, any kind of dress that you want. But I don't want to do it that way so I'm going to uh, maybe look for pictures of food and put it around my picture. Uh, yeah, you know, I like food. Maybe some more green, because as we uh, progress and evolve in our lives, we always advocating for a greener environment. So uh, in this picture, I'm going to look for all the greens that I have, photographs of food, um, good food though yeah around it maybe fruit vegetable wow, this looks like some tomatoes here I'll put this here mm -hmm. yeah, this looks like some smoothie i'll put that here yeah so here as you can see i'm planning where to place everything Then maybe put some more green here. Okay, it looks good. Now, planning is very important. So when you get to this stage, you like to plan because this is where you're adding the final detail of your piece. And although it's thick glue, you can move it around, but you would always want to have a well-planned artwork. This time I add the glue, same process. So it's a repetition of process. 
you rip your paper, add glue, and then paste. Same process, you repeat again and again. Sometimes you can make a beautiful art piece without um, paint, and this is one of the example because you're d recycling stuff, and the more you recycle, we are also helping our environment because we create more uh, noise and more trash every time so if we're able to recycle it and then we upcycle it so out of uh, trash we are creating valuable uh, pieces which tends to uh, be shown in galleries uh, beautify our homes and you know so we are keeping the street clean and keeping our houses also Clean because we have more walls, and the more walls that we have, we can play around it, create pictures of families, have memories of graduation photos, and you don't have to spend a lot of money for any event because you could make artworks from your recycle and beautify your home. Um, yeah, so I think for now I'm done. Um, let me just check. So what you do when you are done with your artwork, um, a lot of artists will attest to this. You will begin to have the communication that you have created another reflection of yourself. So when you look at the mirror, you would sometimes need to dress your eyelashes, your hair. It's the same thing like the artwork you create. Whenever you look at it, you feel, you just feel it. Now by looking at it, I know I have to fix this area. So it's like looking at the mirror. You look at it again and again to find places you want to fix. And you fix them. Once you are done, you would have the, um, the relationship. You're going to have the com communicate with your piece. And your piece will naturally tell you, I'm fully created now. Um, so I said now my baby photo is telling me yes I'm fully grown and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign the artwork always remember to sign your artwork and before I sign I would create like lines around my artwork just to highlight certain parts of my pieces and I'll do those lines here and just to create a background and I would sign my name this is how I sign my name T I J A Y and don't forget today's date I would write the date here 2021 all right Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Art Time with BX Art Factory. And catch you on the next episode on BronxNet. My name is TJ. Peace.